to quit your job and live the life you've always dreamed of. You're really living the dream, I would imagine, the expat dream. I feel more free here than I do in the States. This is it, man. Yeah. This is the life. Join me, Savannah Jane Buffett, as I follow Jameson Whitbeck, a native of Vermont who dreamt of building wooden boats and after college did just that. It wasn't long before he moved his wife and kids down to the Virgin Islands to become a charter captain of his very own handcrafted catamaran. The first time we moved, we had, I mean, no money in the account. One, two, three. I think there's advantages and disadvantages wherever you are. It's just a trade-off, and you choose which ones you want to live with. So this is what it's all about, right? You get to take your kids down to the beach. Absolutely. Congratulations on making your life worth living. Yes. Legendary and obviously lovely Cruise Bay on the island of St. John, otherwise known as Love City. We are going to meet Jameson Whitbeck. He's a captain, he's a boat builder, and he actually built this boat with his own two hands. And he said the best way to get to know him is to get to know his boat. So we're gonna go get on it. There he is now. Ahoy, Captain! Hi there, how's Hi. it going? Hi! Jameson. Savannah, what a beautiful boat. Thank you, yeah. Ready to go for a little sunset sail? Fantastic, of course I'm ready. All right, anything I need to know or just climb no, aboard, No, let's Captain. get on board. All right. Grand entrance. Right? Hi, guys. Hi. What's up? Hi, Margie. Hi, Margie. I'm Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. This is Bella. This is my Hi, daughter, Bella. Bella. This is Kira. Hi, Kira. Can you pour me a drink, please? <laughs> OK. Hi, I'm Annie. I'm Savannah. Nice to meet you. I'm Claire. Hi, Claire. Nice How are you? Nice to meet you. All right, the full fam and the crew. <laughs> and the crew. All right, let's get underway. Let's pull that anchor on the port side bow. Uh, that's gonna have to come to the ladder, so we're gonna take all this off and drop her the line. So where are we cruising tonight? Uh, we're gonna do a little sunset sail tonight, so usually it's uh, kind of a cruise to nowhere. Wherever the sun is uh, setting on the water, we'll try and make it out that far. We are out of here. Well, this is a 50-foot cat, um, Kikoa, and uh, it's a 78-passenger Coast Guard certified boat. We do daytime charters um, here in St. John in the Virgin Islands. We have lots of comfortable stuff like bean bags and the netting and uh, <laughs> lots of seats around. And I see a bar down there. It's a bar, the always open bar. You're actually doing a very good job, Stings. Right on course, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. I've done this, um, done done this once a few times. times. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> My name is Jameson Whitbeck and I'm originally from Vermont. I studied psychology in college and then I really thought I was going to head that direction. My mother, that right when I finished college, uh, rather than encouraging me to continue on in the school, she actually said, you know, what's one thing you've always wanted to do and you haven't had a chance to do yet? Out on the phone with her, I just blurted out, I want to build a wooden boat. And it kind of has taken me all the way to the where I am now. And I've noticed uh, the crew, all female, we discussed it, so that's what it takes to work on this boat. <laughs> Yeah, the guys don't do any work and the girls do all the work. <laughs> you got it figured out. As well. Each time that I've sailed to the Caribbean, it really has been on a boat that uh, we built from scratch. So there's been, you know, five different boats. We started the first boat in 99. Uh, we spent two years in Charleston, South Carolina working on that one. During the time when we built that first boat, my brother and I were living together and living on a boat. Two brothers living on a 23-foot boat with you know, with a dog. Being able to live with my brother and work with him, that was something that touched on growing up together, building forts, and, and then, you know, the future, what would be. We have a cannon that shoots blanks. It's a little bit of tradition on board, but right now we see, you know, the competition. They, they kind of like sometimes will tag along and follow us until we fire the cannon at them, so they're kind of always waiting for us. So I think we should give them what they want. I should, yeah. We're going to get a little closer. Okay. They'll be waving all cutesy, and you'll fire the cannon. and that'll Just by be. pulling so, this cord. Yeah, let me get a little closer. Ramming speed. Ready? One, two, three. Woo! <laughs> That's right. Take that. That what? was awesome. What? Sorry. I can't hear you. So you ended up the first time you came down here and ended up living here, you were working a charter boat that you and your brothers had built. Mm -hmm. 
And did you have a family at that point? Well, yeah, we were, you know, we were in the process. It was, we had a little one, we had a newborn, and, and that was my oldest daughter now, who's 11. We were running a charter operation here in the Virgin Islands and, and had another child, so we had our second one. We were here from 2000 to 2005 operating a boat. And then we sold that one. You know, that might have been uh, a tough decision to, to sell that boat. And, uh, you know, a lot of people wanted to buy it at the time, but it was, it was an emotional thing where uh, my brothers and I, as, you know, equal thirds partners, were running this boat. And it was just time to sell the boat and, and, and stay brothers instead of having any friction that might come from it. So we wanted to quit while we were ahead. I would have been content to be there for several more years. We had to make a decision. It was a hard decision to come back here in Denver. Um, but we made the best of it. You know, we carry on with a new venture with the surfboards. I miss my lifestyle of sailing for a living, having the ocean and the environment. And I miss that connection to kind of the outside world. We were trying to just have the normal lifestyle and go back to the States and, and just do the thing. And there's a couple different ways where I knew I was having a little bit of a struggle. Just the activity level of my kids, you know, when I kind of saw their comparison to what they would do here and how they would act and how they would, you know, snorkel and sail and, and do all these dynamic things and then go back to the States and hide out in air conditioning or, or just play video games a lot and be inside. And so it was a different feeling and I, and I think I probably did consider that I'd made a huge mistake. We talked almost every day and uh, we finally decided that, you know, we need to do another project. Kikoa we started building in uh, 2006. The idea was just to build it and sell it. The fun part about that boat, I think, construction-wise, was it was our second boat. So we got to put all the bells and whistles, all the changes that we wished we had in the first boat. We were able to put it into this one. About six months into it, um, I decided to join. I was there from the time we connected the two holes together until the painting of it. I sanded, I painted, I dealt with epoxy. When we finished the boat in 2008, it was suddenly everyone wanted to downsize it. You know, the economy was bottoming out. It was really not the ideal time to be holding on to a million dollar luxury item. These dudes from the States, I mean, just came through on this idea that they would buy the boat. Negotiated out a uh, deal for them to buy the boat, uh, which went sour due to the whole banking industry collapsing, uh, which then mutated into a lease agreement. They would get a delivery crew, and they did. We always joke about, you know, they, we, they found four guys that knew equally as little about boats as they did. They headed out of Charleston on December 10th, 2008, and they immediately headed out into what you'd say would be like, you know, just deteriorating sea conditions. Now they're in 50 knots of wind and 30 foot seas and bursts of lightning and hail. In the darkness of one night they were unaware that an anchor chain was out and smashing the underside. Woke up in the morning and realized that they had you know, damaged the boat and they kind of freaked out and, and they did what any scared people would do. They, they tripped the satellite beacon that we have on board and they called a mayday. And they bailed. Uh, so the four guys get pulled up into a chopper. This thing is 300 miles offshore. It was a, emotionally a roller coaster. It was a crazy experience to, to have something like that just be gone in a day, in less than a day, an hour. Even my father, who's not the most emotional guy, got choked up and said, you know, I feel like I've, I've got a missing son out there or something. The focus then, once we knew they were all alive and all the investigation and Coast Guard reports were filled out. Is where's the boat, right? We're still with the boat. At this point, you think the boat's lost at sea? We find it's out there. basically it's, by it's, you can get by it. aircraft and five days worth of aerial photos that the boat is in fact floating high and dry. The mast is still up and it's moving back towards shore. It moved back towards shore by 168 miles all on its own. So it's sailing itself. <laughs> it sailed itself home. I mean, we kind of were blinded by the excitement and got on a salvage boat and uh, brought it into shore under its own power. At that point, does it almost seem like a sign? Maybe that... I'm supposed to have this boat and do something. <laughs> I'm supposed to go back to where we were perfectly happy on a Caribbean island, uh, just being a captain. Was the decision sort of made that you grab the wife, you grab the kids, and you said, we're, we're going back to paradise, honey? Yeah. A little more complicated than that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see a, a day in the life of Captain Jameson. Can we, can we, can we do that tomorrow and show me around? You can do the full spectrum. You can get the full experience tomorrow. I'm in. St. John is like such a special place. People are amazing. Can I get a tour of the house? This is where you make breakfast for everyone. This is where Kara cooks. We're testing out this surfing while working idea. My family and I, we all lived in a, in a tree house. This literally is a tree house. I wasn't sure what to expect, but this is a tree house.
I'm Eric Ripper and I'm here with Stanley Tucci. Watch my new show, On the Table, here on Reserve. Click to subscribe. That was good. I am actually your sous chef today. Yes, I know. And you it's are. something that I've wanted for years. <laughs> when I'm cooking at home, I always say, where's Eric? Why isn't he here helping me? Food like film is performance. And we had three different kinds of vodkas. That was our breakfast. Strong? Yeah. As it should be. Sure. I'm completely drunk. Why would I remember that? Both are dramatic. Let's put a little zest in. You want me to do it? Yeah, or? do it. You're better than I am. I'm not better. I mean, seriously, it's a lemon. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! Look at that! Romantic. She loved what she did so much. I would almost feel like I wanted to cry. Spectacular. Look at the fish. It looks really fantastic. It's so pretty. Or sad. I have been in Treme for a couple of episodes. I couldn't say my lines. I couldn't even play myself. <laughs> I, I don't know what I was, but it was pathetic. You were in my kitchen every day. I cook really well. Well, if you teach me how to say my lines... <laughs> <laughs> you can give me the best food on earth if I'm by myself. It's meant to be shared. I mean, you're not going to hide the bottle of wine. And, I mean, you're an alcoholic if you do that. And then you <laughs> take the fish and you put it somewhere and you hide it in a corner. Right. It could be a good Something character for a movie. Yeah, right? but it's a sad character. It's a sad it's character, a sad. exactly. Yeah. Getting better. Yeah. And it's 10 more episodes. <laughs> <laughs>